Hi, I'm Jeff Gerard, president of the Concrete Countertop Institute, and I'd like to talk about sealers today. Um, sealers are a very important part of uh, being successful making concrete countertops, and historically, and they continue to be, a very confusing, frustrating, and, and challenging aspect of, of the whole production process. So what I'd like to do is talk about the different types of finishes out there and uh, give some pros and cons uh, about things like hardeners versus wax versus acrylics versus epoxies versus urethanes. And then from there we can move on to more specifics. So the, the first are treatments. Now treatments are things you do to the concrete. So the concrete has been cast, it's been processed, maybe you acid stain it, maybe you haven't, but the, basically all the work you have to do to the concrete is done. And this is the last step. Well treatments are, are ways that we change the concrete itself and they're generally permanent or very long-lasting. And there's two general subcategories within treatments. We have hardeners, chemical hardeners, sometimes they're called densifiers, and there are repellents. So hardeners are chemicals, um, some examples are sodium silicates, potassium silicates, sodium sil uh, potassium siliconates, lithium silicates, and, and uh, there's some variety of blends that are out there too. But they're predominantly water-based chemicals that are applied to hardened concrete and they soak into the concrete and they chemically change the concrete. They react with the uh, free calcium in the concrete and they form more calcium silicate hydrates. So hardeners um, increase, slightly increase the compressive strength of the, the surface. They make it more, more um, or rather less porous, more impermeable to liquids and they're mainly used in polishing, uh, especially for floors. They're, they're an important element in the, in the polishing process. So for instance, if you're polishing concrete, whether it's a floor or a countertop, you would go through the beginnings of coarser grits. Maybe you start with a 50 grit, maybe you might even start with a metal dot bottom turbo cup or something very aggressive to expose aggregate. And you would proceed to perhaps the 100 or the 200 grit stage. Hardeners are applied to the concrete and they harden cement paste so that as the concrete is now polished with say the 400 grit and the 800 grit and 1500 grit and so on, the cement paste as well as the aggregate itself starts to take shine. So hardeners are good for treating concrete and they work best on concrete that has a um, uh, few pozzolans in it uh, because pozzolans consume the calcium hydroxide and they work best on older concrete where there's uh, plenty of calcium hydroxide that's been built up. It's a free line that the densifiers use. And uh, the major uh, benefit of using a hardener is that they're literally just wiped on, they soak in, and then whatever re residue is left on the surface is just wiped off. So if you can operate a paper towel, you can use these. Um, they're in the concrete, they permanently change the concrete. You generally only have to do them once. Uh, sometimes people do them twice just to make sure they're done. Um, and it's, it's a single step process. Repellents, and I'll, I'll get to the, the pros and cons of these in a second. Repellents are um, chemicals that change the surface tension characteristics of the concrete. Uh, if you've ever used Rain-X on your windshield um, in your car, uh, Rain-X is a siloxane that makes rain beat up on the windshield and run off. So repellents are chemicals that change the surface tension characteristics of the concrete. They make liquids such as um, water or wine or soda uh, beat up on the surface and make it easy to clean off the concrete. Uh, repellents are widely used in the stone and tile industry and these are what um, generally they term sealers. Some repellents have some color enhancing characteristics where they make the, the concrete look deeper and wetter, um, just like water deepens the color of concrete. And some are more invisible. Uh, they leave the concrete looking dry. Uh, generally, the performance of, between the two, uh, either color enhancing or invisible, are very similar or the same. Um, and a, a great combination here is that repellents can be used after densifiers are applied. It's a good one-two combination because densifiers or hardeners uh, keep things from getting down into the concrete, they make it less porous, and repellents keep that liquid up on the surface so it can be wiped up. The great advantage is um, 
they're very easy to do, they're very, very economical. Uh, because they're in the concrete, they can't be peeled off, they can't be scratched off, uh, there's no um, residue on the surface, uh, they're breathable in the sense that water vapor in the concrete will come out over time. The downside of these kind of treatments is that they offer almost no acid protection. So vinegar that is spilled on the concrete uh, will beat up and will stay in a little nice neat pool, but that vinegar is still touching the concrete and it is going to etch the cement paste in the concrete. And it's just a matter of minutes for that to happen. Um, depending on the age of the concrete and the specific formulations, there might be some differences in time, but, but it, it is an inevitability. There's no, um, there's no true protection against acids. Uh, stains such as, uh, take like grape Kool-Aid. It doesn't damage the concrete, it just changes the color, it's a stain. That can be bleached out. Um, so this combination might protect the concrete against stains, but it won't protect against acids. Uh, and that's, that's, their, that's the major con of these kind of finishes. So where, do you, where would be a good place to use these kind of finishes? Uh, that depends on um, your customer, but I would definitely recommend using these kind of finishes for uh, such, such as powder rooms or guest, guest bathrooms, um, fireplace around small tables, maybe kitchen countertops, uh, but it would take a very special clientele who's willing to either be extremely fastidious about keeping things clean or willing to accept etch marks. And etch marks are permanent damage to the concrete. They can be honed out, but that's something that they can't simply wipe up. It's, 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 it's a little bit more involved. Although hardeners and repellents, or a combination of the both, of the two, don't really offer that much acid protection, they do have very good uh, scratch resistance and heat resistance because these aren't affected. They're not on the surface, they're in the concrete. So it's the concrete itself that provides the scratch resistance. And generally, Concrete is largely unaffected by heat. It's usually the finish that, that's affected by the heat. Um, so this is a great combination if, uh, if your clients are willing to keep things clean. Um, another treatment that a lot of people consider as a treatment, it's kind of a, one of these in-between be treatment and versus coatings, what I'm, what I'm going to talk about next is, is wax. Wax seems to be a popular way of, of uh, finishing concrete, and it certainly makes a concrete look nice and feel good and it does provide a little bit of lubrication on the surface but wax itself uh, makes a very poor finish it offers almost no real protection again measured in minutes um, anything that goes on easily also comes off easily so in reality wax is the most maintenance intensive thing you can uh, put on your countertop because as your customers use their countertops and clean them the wax is coming off they have to put it back on that's just something to keep in mind whether your customers are willing to do that. Uh, it, it certainly doesn't hurt and any finish can have wax put over it. It's just a question of do you need it or do you want that. Um, you're not going to get very good protection uh, compared to some of the high performance coatings I'm going to talk about. So evaluate whether you need that or not. Wax on bare concrete could be a fantastic finish with the right application. And I think the more people think about what a finish can really do and where they can use it, the more they can be successful with it and the more comfortable they can be recommending it. So these are the treatments that are out there. There aren't a whole lot of choices. Again, the hardeners, the repellents, and we could, we could lump wax in there as well. Um, not a whole lot of acid resistance, um, but easy to, easy to use, um, very benign, and uh, uh, great scratch resistance.